Talking with Dr. Hal Huggins today, and you're speaking at the Health Freedom Expo about uh, root canals and, and toxicity. First of all, talk about what root canals are and why people need them. Boy, that's a good question. I mean, I know what a root canal is, but why people need them, that part I'm not sure I can answer. <laughs> Due to the studies that I have done for the last um, 15 years, now, from 1962 on until 20, 30 years later, I did a very good job of doing root canals. And uh, I am in hopes that after this length of time, St. Peter has developed Alzheimer's. So maybe he'll forget that I did that. What is a root canal? A root canal is where you take a tooth and <clears throat> you drill a hole in the center of it. And you go in and there's a chamber, the pulp chamber. That's where the nerves and blood vessels and all are. You can take a thing like a little rat tail file and you go up and down in that and clean out the canal. And then you fill it up with wax. And there are all kinds of things that tell about sterilization of the canal. And some of these things kind of go against the basic principles of physics. Uh, for instance, if you heat wax, it expands. When it cools, it contracts. When you push it down, it's kind of like bread dough. You used to make bread, didn't mm -hmm. No, maybe not. Uh, you push bread dough down, you let go, and it springs back. Well, what you do is heat up this wax, put it in the canal, take a hot instrument that's been on a flame, and shove it down in there too. So you push the wax as far as you can and hope it doesn't go through the end. But you can't see the end, so you don't know whether it did or not until you x-ray afterwards. But when you let go, it springs back, and when it cools, it shrinks, leaving 36% shrinkage around the, around the wax. And that's quite enough space for bacteria to get up into. So the bacteria, you've got an infected tooth, or you probably wouldn't be doing a root canal. But the bacteria come up here, and then what makes the sterilization difficult is that there are tubules that go out from the canal to the outer portion of the tooth, which is called the periodontal ligament, which you can probably see on this slide because it says periodontal ligament. Well, if you tie all of these tubes together, it turns out to be three and a half miles long just in a single front tooth. That's a long direction to go to think you can sterilize. But this is what you're taught in dental school. When we got into DNA, we began to find a few other things. And some of my research, I'm sorry to admit, was rather on the slow side. Um, what we did was uh, we'd take out a root canal tooth because we were finding that the root canal tooth was, seemed to be an initiating or at least a contributing factor to a lot of the diseases of, quote, unknown origin, unknown etiology. In other words, where is it coming from? Um, <clears throat> so if we take these teeth out um, and examine the root the, the bottom third down here, we found a whole lot of bacteria. And these are kind of dangerous bacteria. And then uh, a year or two later, I decided if the bacteria are really coming through those tubules to the periodontal ligament, what does the ligament contain? So we would cut off the ligament and test that. But we found more bacteria in the ligament. Now, you can't get to that to sterilize it without taking the tooth out. And then, about 10 years later, I got the idea, what do you suppose is going on in the bone outside of the tooth? So we take the tooth out, and then you have to use a dental burr to cut out the ligament. Uh, a lot of uh, dentists will just try to scrape it out with a little instrument that scrapes. And what that does is to push the bacteria into the bone, into the bloodstream. So if you do that, people get a whole lot sicker. All right, so we'd take the tooth out, take a burr, cut out the periodontal ligament, let it bleed for a little bit, and then take the blood sample there. We found a whole lot more bacteria. 
So sterilizing the tooth is something that is not only impossible, but it can't be done. So what we do now is then we found, now blood chemistry is my primary field. So what I do is look at the blood chemistry before and after these procedures to see what's happening in the immune system. I have a postdoc master's that em emphasized immunology. So we look at the immune system, we look at the endocrine system, we look at cardiovascular, look at all these systems to see if things got better or worse. Well, in taking the tooth out, sometimes some of the chemistries that I follow, the blood chemistries, would go down and four months later they'd come back and approach where they were supposed to be. Okay, this is nice. But then we found that if we take the tooth out, cut out the ligament, let it bleed for five minutes. I mean, you don't need a transfusion. You may be losing maybe a teaspoon of blood. So that's not real dangerous, but it's real safe. Because what it does is to bring the bacteria, flush the bacteria out of the bone. And then we found our changes in six days instead of four months. So where is the real problem with the root canal? It's around the tooth in the surrounding bone. Our research now is trying to see how far into the bone the bacterial infection goes, but it's at least a quarter of an inch, which in the mouth is you know, a quarter of a mile. Mm. <laughs> it's a long distance in the mouth.